Hi, this is the first in a series of videos that Job Test Prep's testing team has created in order to give you some useful tips on how to cope with numerical reasoning tests. Applying these tips will help you reduce response times, alleviate stress and increase the chances of receiving a higher score. Today, we focus on how to avoid unnecessary calculations. One of psychometric tests most evident features is not the difficulty, but rather their rigorous time limits. Unlike real university level math problems, here, each question could definitely be solved within reasonable time frames. It's just that when these time frames are 45 to 75 seconds per question, we have a problem. Tip number one, plan your calculations course. Due to time pressure, we tend to rush into calculations, not bearing in mind that planning your steps ahead for 20 precious seconds could in fact save a great deal of time in escaping a lengthy calculation. Good examples for applying this tip are using a common multiplier, ignoring multiplication factors when possible, mastering your calculator, a very efficient way to decrease response times which will be discussed later in further detail. Let's look at an example which is considered to be of easy difficulty level. A family's monthly petrol expense in year one is £250. What would be the percentage change in the annual petrol expense if in year two the monthly expenses are only £180? To answer this, we can look to reduce the number of calculations needed. Instead of multiplying each monthly expense by 12 in order to calculate the yearly expenditure, we can automatically see that both years would be multiplied by the same factor, and so that factor can be cancelled out. So, using our quick percentage trick, we calculate. By cutting down on the amount of calculations needed to reach the right answer, you save time that can be used to review your answers or work on more difficult questions. Let's look at another example. Take five seconds to understand the graph. In 2008, 400 auction contracts were offered for £22,200 each. In 2009, contract value increased by 7%, and there was a 25% decrease in the number of contracts offered. How much more money than Buildingo did Rhodes make? Now, some of us who tend to rush into calculations frantically might choose to do the following. Calculate the contract value in 2009, which is right, then, calculate the number of contracts in 2009 after a 25% decrease, which is also okay. Then, see how many building contracts there were in 2009, and how many were roads. Finally, they would subtract building go from roads in the following way. Some might even write each step's calculation result on a piece of paper. Now, what we suggest is to spend just a few more seconds to see that we can avoid a few steps in advance. We were asked for the difference, which refers to the relative market share differences. So, we'll still have to calculate the new contract price, but other than that, everything goes straight into one line in the calculator. Notice the order of calculations so that in case you don't have a scientific calculator, the deduction comes first to avoid another line. Tip number two. Master the calculator. This can definitely help us move faster on the test. Know your way around both simple and advanced calculators so that you are familiar with all the shortcuts. For example, no need for zero when writing decimals. Using the percentage button, saving information with M plus, etc. Don't reset after each calculation. Rather, use the information from the previous step. We hope you found this helpful. Stay tuned for our next video in the series and feel free to visit us for more tips and practice resources.